Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome uh, to this introductory webinar organized by Novigado. My name is Michela, and I'm pleased to host this event with my colleague Bart, uh, Senior Pedagogical Advisor at European Schoolnet. Uh, just a practical information uh, for the audience, uh, the webinar is recorded and its recording may be used for dissemination purposes. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them. Uh, selected questions and comments uh, will appear on the screen during the event and at the end and will be addressed by the speaker. So please, Bart, um, I give you the floor. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm very, very happy, very pleased to present what uh, we have created in the Navigado project. And first of all, I want to stress that it's really teamwork. It's not, not me, uh, but it's a very nice uh, group of partners, part of the Navigado project. So, so together with European Schoolnet, we have uh, amazing partners from Poland, from Turkey, from uh, Portugal and from France. And together we uh, have started this Novigado project in uh, 2019 and our activities will end at the start of uh, 2022. But meanwhile, uh, it's really uh, a nice project uh, to be part of, as I said, and uh, as you can see in the subtitle, we focus on active learning and on innovative teaching in flexible learning spaces. And of course, with the FCL, in Brussels uh, at European Schoolnet, we were very interested to, to participate in this. Now, so far, we have been working on the support of teachers and, and schools, and we will continue uh, doing so, of course. There is a repository of uh, resources being built, and there will be more resources coming once we run pilots in different schools in Europe in uh, the autumn. We uh, are creating uh, an interactive map uh, of innovative learning spaces that uh, will continue to be filled. Later on, we have uh, uh, very nice publications and practical guidelines and, and case studies. And there is this uh, scenario tool, which I will introduce in a moment. It's about people, this project. So we have uh, built a community with live events, uh, of which you have uh, now one that you can attend. There is our blog, uh, so there is quite a lot of uh, things that we have produced uh, and will produce in Novigado project. So I invite you to go to this URL if you have time later on, fcl.eon.org slash Novigado, and then you will read uh, all about uh, what we have uh, created in uh, this, this project. So let's start with uh, explaining the pedagogical background that uh, will be uh, the basis of uh, the scenario tool that I will introduce in a moment. And I have been using uh, this picture for a while and in the previous webinars, if you were there, you may have seen this girl climbing the wall, but I still like it so much but because it it's really reflects what uh, we want to do and how we see learning, in fact. So this is a, a teamwork. Uh, the rope is held by a teammate and the girl is climbing to the top finding her own way with trial and error. And uh, finally, she will reach uh, the goal that she's uh, aiming at. Now, uh, this is the type of learning we want to bring into practice. And uh, we have put uh, the four C's that you may have uh, heard of uh, also as uh, our basis for our theoretical background in the scenario tool. So you could uh, link, if you want, to uh, the critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity C to, to the girl climbing the wall if you want to. But of course, in classrooms, we don't usually climb walls, but we do other things. But you know the, the let's say, the, the story, uh, you, you will understand the story, sorry, uh, that uh, this is uh, our values that we want to, to push forward, uh, that our students need to be critical thinkers, uh, collaborators, uh, communicators, and uh, they also uh, have to be uh, creative thinkers in, in the end. So you will find uh, these four uh, C words back in the tool in a moment when I will uh, present it. What else? Uh, active learning in the classroom starts with uh, the pedagogy that I more or less described of a learner who really uh, knows what he's aiming at, being active, but also knowing about uh, the learning goals. And to make active learning happening in the classroom, uh, the space design and the use of technology is very important. And you will see in the scenario tool that uh, space is 
uh, does have a really an important role in how you uh, set up your, your learning activities in your classroom. Because we want to move away from uh, the stereotype standardized way of, of learning with uh, the, the, let's say, the fixed setting of a classroom. There is much more that you can do with uh, bringing variation in space with using technology and in the first place, making your students active learners. Now, the scenario tool, uh, we want to encourage teachers to bring active learning in the classroom, but we also want to guide them. It's not an empty tool. You will see that the tool is filled with uh, some elements that you can really use and adapt. And with the aim of bringing variety, as I said, in, in your learning in your classroom, uh, move away from the one size fits all, uh, from the stereotype setting that you use for every lesson. So we have uh, created a tool where you can uh, think and rethink your learning activities in your classroom. And as I said, it's not only about encouragement, but we also want to, to help you to, to guide uh, the teachers that use the tool to bring active learning pedagogy in the classroom. So the tool is being filled with ready-made building bricks that you can adapt, that you can put in, in the order that you want to bring them in. We also will uh, fill the tool with uh, ready-made full scenarios. So far, we only have one, but they will come in the upcoming weeks. So that's the idea. It's not an empty tool, uh, an empty white page that you uh, have to, to fill in, but there is already some content and you are totally free to adapt it, to use it, and to use your own elements, your own building bricks as well, because uh, many teachers already have great ideas. They can adapt. And then uh, when you uh, add them to your scenario tool, you will also get uh, automatic feedback uh, about uh, the active uh, learning level, I would say, of your scenario. So a bit about uh, the content uh, and how we structured the tool. We have uh, divided our activities into six activity categories. So here you see them uh, positioned, and I must tell you, this is uh, the first choice you need to make once you uh, add a new activity to your scenario. So you have to decide whether you uh, want to have it as uh, an interact and instruct activity and exchange and discuss and investigate and research. And then there is create, present, and then uh, finally assessment and feedback. Of course, I will explain them uh, in a moment. So with that is the first thing, just to, to make it happen that uh, you go for this variety, that you uh, not only have those, uh, and I start already with the first one, those uh, traditional activities, which are really fine, uh, but they should be in balance with other activities. So the first two categories tell something about the relation between the teacher and the learner. And the first one, interact and instruct our activities where the teacher interacts with the learner to give instruction or to guide them through the learning process. So this may uh, at first sound, uh, sight sound uh, quite traditional. Well, it is traditional in a way, but we want to stress that it's not really forbidden that uh, a teacher is in the front and, and uh, interacts with, with students and involves them all, of course, but it should also be in balance with other things. One other thing uh, that I have here is exchange and discuss where uh, the teacher is more at the site and where the learners communicate and exchange with, with peers, either in small groups or it could be in, in, the, in the total group as well. So where the focus is really on the action of the, of the learners as autonomous learners and where the teacher uh, is a bit at the site, whereas in the interact and instruct is more prominent uh, guiding the learning process. The other categories uh, describe more what uh, you can do in, in the classroom. Uh, so uh, the learners perform activities to collect data or they find answers to driving questions, etc. So that would be under the category of uh, investigate and research. So as I said, for all these categories, we will provide sample activities, but I will come back to that in a moment. Create activities, as you can imagine, are activities where learners create any type of product to showcase their learning. And this is also quite important in active learning that uh, learners are, are content uh, creators and not just content consumers. They, they produce things. And also important, they share what they have learned. 
with an audience that is also important. They showcase their learning and an audience can interact uh, about their products that uh, are either finished or unfinished yet. So that is also a type of activities that we have included. And then finally, there are some activities that um, uh, address the assessment and feedback. So teachers and or learners perform any activity related to assessment or giving feedback. Now, people who have visited the, the Future Classroom may see some, uh, let's say, similarities to the, to the learning zones that we have in our lab, which in fact are also, uh, let's say, uh, zones where you support a pedagogical idea. Uh, the list that you see here are not exactly the same zones, but still there is some resemblance between the learning zones, where you also uh, encourage uh, learners in that type of classroom to, uh, to do a variety of activities, not just uh, listen to the teacher and uh, uh, doing what they uh, do, what, what he says, uh, but also be, uh, let's say, more um, uh, an autonomous learner, creating products, uh, doing some investigation, presenting them to an audience, and also important in the end, uh, reflecting and uh, uh, self-assess or assess others. So that is the, our activity categories. Now, I give an example of uh, one of the sample activities, and I do it on purpose uh, to, uh, to make you choose in which category you uh, would put this. And I said on purpose because there might be some, uh, let's say, doubt in which category you have it. If you would find the category, the activity, KWL chart where the student reflect on a topic provided by the teacher and gets three questions to answer. What do you know about the topic? What have you learned? And what would you like to learn more? Now, maybe in the chat, please write, I give you a few moments time to write down in which category you would put this. Interact, instruct, change and discuss, investigate and research, create, present, assessment and feedback. So uh, I don't have access to, to Facebook or to uh, YouTube where uh, this presentation is uh, uh, streamed. So maybe Michaela, if you have some incoming answers, then uh, you can tell me because there is always a, a delay in uh, what we say and what you will see on the Facebook or on the YouTube. So, Michaela, do you see something coming in? I mean, I just wanted to ask you what category of activity you would put the KWL chart in. I would have hoped some answers. Uh, maybe it's a bit too difficult or, uh, well, I can tell you, we, we put it into uh, assessment. Ah, there's one. Uh, Michaela, tell me which one. And uh, I will wait a few more moments. I will have another one coming up. So which category was posted as the answer so i can read it for you uh, yeah, edmund um, is as posted categories that's very interesting can you consider how a teacher might be might best accommodate and plan for for differentiation in an active learning scenario yeah but that would be a question for the end i mean now i have a very specific uh, question that i wanted to ask uh, here but yeah, okay, I will give the answer and maybe for the next uh, example, there is uh, someone who wants to... Uh, so, yeah, yeah, Edmond posted again saying formative assessment. Yeah, indeed. So we put it also in assessment and feedback, but I wanted to, to tell that uh, it doesn't really matter so much if you have your activity and you are in doubt, put it in a, in a category that you, you want to put it in, which makes sense, of course because uh, I've done this activity and, and some put it in the interact and instruct, but in our tool, we also put it in the assessment and feedback uh, uh, part. Uh, so there is always a discussion on this. Maybe the next one uh, will be uh, similar. So here's the activity. 
sit down if you agree. So that's uh, the sample activity you will find with the tool. All the students are asked to stand up if they agree with a quote set by the teacher or maybe by someone else or written on a board, they are invited to sit down. So that's the activity, they all stand up, teacher says something, if you agree, you sit down and the people are still standing, they have to wait for another quote uh, to sit down. And uh, so this is how the activity can continue. Again, what type of uh, um, category would you have here? And again, there might be some confusion where you put it. But you can still yeah, adapt any of our sample activities that we have put in. And uh, so I see uh, exchange and discuss here. Uh, yeah, the teammate uh, of the, of the pro Navigator project put it in interact and instruct uh, because the teacher is uh, yeah, organizing this activity uh, with, with all the students uh, standing in the front maybe and, and all the students uh, listen to the teacher and they act according to his scenario. But if you want to put it uh, at another uh, category, you're fine to, to do so. I mean, it's not, a, not an exam, the tool, it's it just uh, to the promotion, the encouragement of bringing variety in your lessons and to reflect on what you are doing that you, you should uh, have activities of all, uh, of all sorts. Uh, how do you do it in, in um, let's say for real, if you want to, to uh, bring a lesson into, into practice. I gave an example. Imagine that um, you give your students the assignment that they need to, to know, to learn about the eating habits of peers at the school. So uh, what do they eat for breakfast or, or whatever? So, and then they could uh, organize a survey. But of course, you know that the survey needs to be prepared. And uh, maybe they need to read uh, about uh, eating habits in, in general, what is healthy, what, what is not. And maybe at the end, uh, the results need to be presented also in one way or another. I mean, if you have this idea of, of the survey, you could then uh, try to, to build your scenario with uh, activities that uh, are from different parts of uh, what we have here, the different uh, categories. And of course, you don't need to put them in this order. And also very importantly, you can repeat types of activities. For instance, if they have made a survey and they present it to uh, someone else, um, you could maybe have a pre-presentation and then they could uh, have uh, assessment and feedback uh, maybe from peers and from the teacher. And then they could maybe do a final presentation for, uh, a, let's say, an audience at school. So you can repeat, of course, all those uh, activities uh, that you, you put in. Uh, so it, it's quite a flexible system, but the activity categories is just, as I have said a few times before, a way to reflect on what you do in the classroom. And it's also a way of bringing the theory or the, yeah, the, the model of the learning zones into, into practice. Uh, so that uh, is the, the activity categories part. But you will have to find it out. And uh, the idea is also that uh, you can look at other examples from other teachers who have used the tool. And then, uh, yeah, it, it's always uh, nice to discuss about certain things. But in the end, you master your own uh, lesson plan, your own scenario. And where you put your activities, that's really up to you. As long as you do not always, I would say, uh, use very, very traditional uh, setups. Okay, uh, another part, which is uh, maybe also a bit complicated at first sight, is that in the scenario tool, we want to promote that you use the space in, in a different way, not in, a, in just a traditional way with the traditional roles and the teacher in the front, uh, but there is much more uh, possible. So we have uh, created some spatial parameters. And uh, first of all, uh, we group them in, in the role of a teacher. So you could have um, teacher-led activities. You could have activities where the teacher is at the side going from one group to another. And you could also have uh, a setup where the teacher is maybe less visible 
where the students uh, have their independent learning. And then you could maybe also use the whole school uh, for this type of um, activity. So the role of uh, the teacher has some implications in how you organize the space. If uh, there's a teach-led activity, it, it's clear that the teacher needs to see the students and vice versa. Otherwise, I mean, you, you have some problems, I would say. Uh, with teachers at the site, uh, well, some visibility is, is okay, but it's less uh, strict uh, because at this type of activities, maybe you would not need a board to write on. Uh, so the teacher can go from one group to another and the groups can be spread all over the place. Uh, but still some visible action is, is needed. So all the groups should be, let's say, more or less in the same position. But if you really give autonomy and independent learning, then you could use breakout rooms in your school as well. So uh, the role of a teacher has certainly some implications on, on, the, on the space. Then uh, the positioning of the learners is also uh, important. If you have tasks where the learners work individually, then uh, it's different from uh, having tasks where the learners work into uh, smaller groups or uh, where you have an activity where you work in plenary, where you work all together. Uh, so that is, has some implications as well in how you organize the, the, the space. So the learners, if they want to, to need to do like with an exam, uh, yeah, they have to work individually. So there will be some space uh, left between the, the different uh, uh, learners because otherwise they, they might look at the pages of others. Uh, Working together in smaller groups, working together in, in uh, uh, with with plenary, and the ideal thing is, of course, that you can uh, reposition your learners in a very smooth way in the space, so that you have flexible furniture where you can uh, easily go from individual to smaller groups to together. That is, uh, of course, an ideal uh, position. Last thing that we called here is. Uh, Called and, and now, ah, okay, sorry, uh, there was uh, some delay here. Uh, the last uh, spatial parameters is what we call the space format. And um, if you do some learning, uh, it can be that uh, it's all public, that uh, you see all the actions of the others. Uh, but nowadays in schools, we also think of, of providing some, some more uh, private uh, areas where you have some cocoon. Uh, spots uh, where you can sit with with yeah by yourself or in in smaller um, groups so that uh, you don't have this distraction from from others uh, that is also possible um, of course you need yeah to have uh, some space to organize this this privacy and then there is also uh, that has become very important but I think the the virtual setting where uh, students are in in remote setting and where they are in fact in a, in a different space, but still connected. And, and that is also something that is now part of our learning. It is a virtual uh, space and uh, not only the space that um, is uh, possible in, in the school. And we really wanted to have this to, uh, to our, our parameters as well, because uh, more and more virtual uh, setups uh, will be uh, needed uh, for the pandemic but maybe also later on will be part of our, our learning. So, yeah, how could that work? Uh, if you create an activity where it is maybe teacher-led, where all the learners are together in the activity and where you have a, a space format that is uh, virtual. So I just selected uh, a few of them. And then, yeah, I would think of, um, for instance, what we have done quite a lot, a remote teaching video conference where the teacher is maybe giving instructions, all the learners are there and they are in a, in a virtual setting. So that is uh, yeah, an example of uh, how to describe a certain activity in regards to the spatial parameters. Or for instance, if you would have uh, an activity where the teacher is at the site, where they work in, in smaller groups and where there is more uh, private distinction between uh, the different groups, then you could also think of organizing this type of activity in your school where your, your groups have less distraction, where you go maybe to another space, uh, uh, bigger space in, in your, your school, where you could set up this type of group work 
And uh, all these parameters make you reflect on how to organize learning in a different way and bring variation, if possible, of course, because yeah, you need to, to have some space in your school. But uh, also, sometimes you need to find uh, space in your school and then make these things happen. So these are the space parameters that we also ask for that you can indicate if you want in your, in your scenario. And in the end, you would get an overview of what uh, you have created. I will come to that in a moment. So how does it uh, work? Uh, maybe uh, some of you already have taken an account. Uh, otherwise, you will have to, to sign in again to, to start your scenario. So here is the URL. And uh, so that's fcl.ean.org slash scenario dash tool. And there you find uh, the um, tool. So if you uh, go there and you, you uh, have your account and you can sign in, then uh, the thing you need to do is to uh, uh, maybe also look at the headings that are on top of the scenario tool, because all the, the things that I just mentioned are there um, maybe more elaborated than, than I just uh, explained them briefly. So that is not really part of the tool, but our uh, pedagogy tab is, is quite important. Uh, we will uh, elaborate it over the upcoming weeks a bit, but there you find the basics of how the, the scenario tool is created. And, and it's important to have a look at uh, that page as well. But that's in fact outside the tool, because if you really want to, uh, to get started with the tool, you need, and that's quite obvious, click on create scenario, and then you can get started. Uh, so there is some issue still with people who have um, uh, signed in and they still see the button uh, sign in as you see it here, but don't worry. If you see the button create scenario, just click on it. And don't worry uh, that uh, the sign in button is still there, although you've got uh, the message that you were signed in successfully. But that is something that uh, will be changed later on. So if you have the create button, please press it. And then you have, um, as you can see on top, three steps that you need to go through. And the first step is select type. And there are two types, two uh, types that you can have to choose in, in from the start. You see the blue rectangle. I want to start a new scenario from scratch. And this is what uh, you want to uh, do in most cases, I would say. It doesn't mean that the tool uh, is empty when you uh, go for that option. You will see that you will also be able to uh, select some building bricks that uh, we will put in or have put in already. The other option is that uh, you click on, I want to tailor an existing scenario. And that's the idea that we will collect from the audience, from the communities, nice examples that you will put in, uh, that we will put in, and then you can select this scenario. And then you can do whatever you like with the scenario, delete certain parts, adapt certain parts. So that is something that we will work on in the future. To, to build this type of repository of, uh, of uh, scenarios, but we will put in uh, with the team uh, more uh, full scenarios that you can use. But yeah, for now, I think uh, most of you will start, I want to start uh, a new scenario from scratch. And then if you uh, go for that option, you click on next step. Uh, this is something I need to say if you want to move on click on the button next step because if you click on the blue rectangle nothing will happen and uh, but if you click on next step you can uh, go on so that's an easy start you select the type uh, and you say okay i want to, to start something with my own ideas you start from from scratch and then in step two you have uh, a very very brief scenario information of course that that makes sense that you uh, provide a title uh, you can uh, tick in most cases uh, the options that are already provided. So you can uh, click on your, your language, uh, write a very short summary what the scenario is about. Uh, it's important if you would uh, want to, to share it. Uh, there is also an easy system to provide some learning activities, some learning objectives, sorry. Uh, don't uh, uh, exaggerate with them. Uh, keep it uh, basic and, and simple. You can also provide the minimum and maximum age, and then you can also select uh, 
subjects that we uh, have provided or if you think uh, it's, it's for all uh, subjects then there is also an option for it if you think it's uh, something that uh, uh, can include uh, more uh, subjects so you will find all the options so that is the start that you you can do in the end and then you uh, move on to the most important uh, step is to build your scenario with activities so the th the title is uh, step three activities and between brackets and if you want you can also add some section titles if you have a, a longer scenario you can also insert some headings some some titles that could be helpful for you but i will come back uh, to that uh, later so there is this button at an activity this is the first thing you need to do and i already told you that uh, you will have to select an uh, category one of those six categories you can update them later if you want to if you are not happy with it in the end uh, but for each of those categories we have provided sample activities as you can see here carousel jigsaw etc but on top you find create your own so you uh, if you think i want to have a discussion activity as a start with my students then uh, you click on exchange and discuss and then you uh, click on create your own and you can find you can write down all the details about the timing and how you uh, you can set up the space one thing to remind there's also this option that you can uh, uh, reshuffle the order in the end so if you have made your uh, scenario you think oh maybe i will start uh, with this activity so then you can also reshuffle uh, the order so I will not uh, go into all the, the buttons. This is something do, that you have to discover. But I also uh, already would like to see some result, uh, what uh, the result would be. And this is the, something that uh, Marcin from, from Poland, from the team, uh, created uh, as a, an ex a sample of, of, a, of a project, passion projects. And if you go all the steps and you provide all the activities and do all the steps, then this uh, is the result and uh, you you will agree with me that it's a very nice layout which gives uh, also an overview of uh, how you uh, have created your your scenario and uh, in this scenario you will see that all the seeds of education uh, collaboration communication creativity and critical thinking uh, will be part of the scenario it could be that only three or only two are part of it it depends on, on what uh, types of C you click each time you give your scenario. And then uh, you can also see that uh, for all of the activities, we ask you, if you want to, uh, to, to give the other parameters that I just mentioned, like the position of the learners, the role of the teacher, uh, the space format. So you see that uh, this scenario is a scenario that takes place in most cases in smaller groups, but there is, of course, 11% uh, here uh, where we do it all together. Uh, I mean, it's just a sample, uh, but it could change. But I think it's a relevant information to, uh, to tell. Uh, also very important is that, uh, yeah, as a teacher, you lead the activity or you are most at the site. And as you can imagine, at uh, this project of Navigado, we prefer that there is quite a lot of percentage where the teacher is at the site where you have give uh, autonomy to the learner as an independent learner. And so if you always have in your scenarios 100% teacher-led activities, then you should reflect maybe on uh, how you do it. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the space format, I, I repeat that it's not always possible to, to bring uh, all the variation into it uh, because it depends on your conditions at your school but still it's a good way to to think about it and uh, yeah maybe also reflect on uh, having some virtual fully virtual elements into it now if you want to look at it uh, you can uh, view the sample there if you uh, you will also find it uh, inside the tool but uh, you will need to have a, a registration or a, an account to view it uh, if you want to, to view it. So this is not uh, the full representation of, of the scenario. If you go there, then you'll see the, the full scenario as a sample. Uh, what I wanted to say is also that, um, uh, yeah, this is a bit further on uh, where you have uh, 
the, the timing of each of the activities, which is also accumulated uh, in, the, in the overview page. So this is a five hour project. And so all the timings of the activities are uh, counted together and in the end uh, presented uh, when you finish your scenario and make it public. Uh, so these are the activities you, so you see here. Uh, this first activity takes one hour and a half. It's an investigate and research activity. And uh, so the, the title is researching the, the project idea. And then further on, you would uh, find the description, the tools you will use, etc. So, and as I said, if you want to, to bring some section titles into it, you see these nice uh, blue bars, these headings, you can add afterwards or, or while creating your scenario. And then, uh, yeah, it, it uh, will improve the readability of, of your scenario and it, it uh, will create uh, yeah, also what I wanted to say a, a unique URL that you can uh, you can share. Uh, the idea is also that uh, we will uh, work on uh, how we can share it with with, with a PDF or or maybe with a repository. I will I will come back uh, to that. So with all the yeah the information I I gave you now, you will not know all the parts of the tool. Uh, it, it's something that. Uh, you need to discover for yourself and, and maybe uh, some buttons will uh, be unclear at first sight. Uh, yeah, that is uh, the learning process, the learning curve, not only for you, but also for the designers. So if we have that, that feedback that certain things uh, should uh, be improved, we will do so. And in fact, we are in this uh, phase of uh, updating uh, the tool. Uh, making it more user-friendly, uh, having some uh, very small issues here and there that we, we want to, uh, to improve. So this is uh, what we will do. As I said, uh, the technical team at European Schoolnet will fix some minor issues and, and will make uh, improvements for you in the upcoming period. And then the Navigado team will upload more ready-made activities and more full scenarios so that you can really, uh, yeah, use them and uh, reflect on them and adapt them in the way that you want. Uh, we will also upload more suggested tools because that is something that I didn't mention too much. Uh, we also uh, have on our website a list of, uh, uh, in most cases, uh, technical tools, uh, online tools, and, and also there we will do some more work to, to have uh, some good uh, suggestions. Uh, there is already quite a lot of materials, but we will uh, improve them and, and have more uh, things coming up. And then in the end, um, we hope that uh, this first launch of the tool will be, uh, let's say, expanded uh, with more features in the next stage. So EON is discussing uh, that if this tool is successful and found uh, useful by the users, it could be a very good idea to take it to a next stage and to create a public repository of, of scenarios that you could also bring into your account and, and adapt if you want to, of course, because you also have the right to keep things uh, private. Uh, so that is uh, what we want to do. So we will uh, give more support, uh, more uh, also, uh, let's say, uh, tutorials is maybe a big word, but, but still we will give uh, some... Uh, additional uh, support for you to use the, the tool in the upcoming weeks. And if you have some, some feedback about it, please uh, please send it to us. Um, and yeah, this is how I want to, to finish uh, this uh, presentation with, uh, with question time. If you have some questions now, uh, please uh, yeah, send them to the chat. Uh, we will uh, see how we can uh, accommodate them uh, in the best possible way. Uh, my colleague Michela will will put uh, some of the questions. Yeah, to, uh, exactly. Uh, to the well, first of all, thank you so much, Bart, for for the, the the explanation. And I would say, yeah, I would invite everyone uh, to spread the word to use the tool, so to implement it and well to take it to the next stage uh, of it, hopefully. So, well, you received uh, some quite nice feedback. Um, so everyone was saying that the presentation was very clear and helpful. Um, and also, um, Edmond added that um, this remind 
teachers as to whose voice has been heard uh, in the lesson. Yeah, definitely. And we also have a, a question from, from Edmond. Um, is there any facility for a teacher to revisit a lesson after it has taken place and compare the percentage of time planned for each category with what actually occurred during the lesson? Yeah, of course. I mean, you will create your own set of scenarios. And what you can also do is if you have created one, you can also copy a scenario and make a variation of it without having to fill in again all the elements. If you have a good idea and, for instance, you are teaching in different uh, cl class groups uh, with, with different sections or, or different age groups, maybe, you can uh, copy uh, your own uh, scenario and, and maybe leave out some activities, adapt some activities, uh, and maybe also change things after you have uh, reflected on this. So that's all possible. You, you own your own content uh, in your environment. And then uh, you can also, by the way, um, because I didn't want to, to share every button, you can make lists of, uh, of scenarios that uh, you have created. You can order them by, by subject or, or in, in any way that you want to, to order them uh, by age group. Uh, so you can uh, yeah, uh, create a whole set of, of, uh, of lesson plans and scenarios for yourself and uh, organizing them in the way that you want to uh, by using the, the list option. I don't know whether that's uh, an answer to the, to the question. I hope so. Um, but of course, uh, yeah, it's important that uh, you and and yeah, we, we also encourage uh, peer um, collaboration. If you would uh, create uh, a scenario together, you would all deliver it. Uh, you you watch maybe also uh, in the classroom what the other teacher, your colleague, is doing in the classroom, and, and then you can get give feedback. So it could really be something collaborative for a school that you uh, create those scenarios and that. Uh, all the teachers uh, who want to uh, to use them, uh, use them and, and give feedback uh, on them. Okay, Michaela, do you have uh, yeah. more questions? Thanks. No, the, um, the, the user are just replacing very flexible and that's great. Yeah. So no further question, uh, neither on YouTube or, or Facebook where we're streaming. I would say, well, we have food for thought a lot and um, I don't know if you want to add something no, I'm, I'm, to conclude. I'm we, we finally gave this to the public. Uh, yes, although, definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's not, not fully, 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 fully ready yet, uh, but I think all the people in the audience will understand that it's uh, quite a complex thing to, to create something from scratch like this. Uh, and, and, yeah. um, um, and I think the team as well uh, can, be, can be proud of what we have uh, achieved Definitely. Uh, so far, uh, but we really want to listen to the audience and, and to, to change a thing. And, and I can say that uh, none of these tools are really perfect. perfect. Uh, but we wanted yeah. to, to make it as flexible as possible and not, as I said, not create something empty, but put in some, some suggestions and then uh, you go ahead with it in a way that uh, you want to and the final result i would say that the web page that you receive after every uh, scenario is, is quite nice to to share quite colorful uh, yeah uh, i think uh, i hope at yeah. least that we can make teachers happy i hope too uh we got uh, another question saying if you can give a quick suggestion for appropriate assessment on active learning uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, that would uh, be, <laughs> let's say, another webinar. Uh, we have uh, uh, put in already three uh, activities, uh, but we will add uh, many more so that the KWL activity is, is already one. Uh, but if you go back uh, into, uh, let's say, uh, two weeks time, uh, we hope to have at least uh, eight to ten activities uh, around assessment uh, put in because the team uh, has brought them together we, we still need to, to update them and then uh, you will find for sure uh, some good uh, examples of uh, 
of assessment uh, and, and, and feedback uh, that you can, uh, you can use. Uh, yeah, um, but as I said, uh, in, in some cases, you should look further than just a category. I just mentioned that uh, sit down if you agree. I mean, this, this format of having uh, students stand up and sitting down, I mean, this could also be applied as an assessment activity, uh, as a kind of, of exit ticket in the end uh, about certain concepts, whether they have understood them uh, or not. I mean, um, if you look at all the activities, they, they can move to other categories. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, we already have put in now, I think, uh, yeah, more than 20, 25 activities but we aim at uh, having uh, much, many more, sorry, uh, coming up. Uh, so hopefully you will find uh, what you need there as well. Uh, yeah. One more thing, uh, we, uh, of course, the tool is, it should not be, yeah, uh, let's say a, a document to read. It, it should also be something practical, but in the Navigado um, project, we will soon uh, also uh, deliver uh, practical guidelines where uh, also the, the theory behind the tool is explained into more details. So that is, uh, so keep, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in touch with uh, all our uh, communication channels uh, where you will see the, um, the guidelines being uh, shared. Uh, we will also translate them in the, the project languages, which will be then Polish and Turkish and, and, and French. Uh, but of course, uh, it will be there in English as well, and it will arrive very soon. And uh, that uh, would even give more, uh, let's say, background than the pedagogy page that uh, I mentioned, that is also part of the Novigado tool. And uh, there you can find uh, many uh, activities already for, for assessment and others uh, as a reading text there. Yeah, if I may add, um... In the project, we have a really um, useful blog on the active learning, and we've been publishing uh, a lot of contributions from a lot of educational experts. So um, please have a look at the, at the blog at the Future Classroom Lab website, of course, where you can find um, a lot of resources and tools. And of course, as Bart mentioned to follow uh, the social media channels, so maybe to be updated uh, by, by the news coming in the next few weeks. Uh, so no further questions, I would say that we can end this uh, webinar slash event slash introduction to, to the tool. Um, thanks so much, Bart, again. Yeah, thank it you. It has been really, really, really interesting. And, uh, providing the the, the technology, which according to me worked really fine. And yeah. uh, so we will uh, yeah, use it in the, in the future. Uh, yes. More, I would say. And just so to mention all... that uh, everyone is saying thank you and it has been appreciated, uh, I guess. Yes. Um, so thank everybody to, to, to stay with us uh, this almost an hour. And then see you, um, well, stay safe and see you around. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.